Hello everyone! Random vibration analysis is intended for simulations where non-deterministic loading occurs over a variable frequency range, such as vibrations uh, experienced in a truck driving over a road or loads on the aircraft wing in the flight. The reason we pursue statistical results instead of time history dynamics results is because First, we cannot precisely characterize the loading, it is random. And second, solving the time history of a structure under random vibration is computationally expensive and may not always yield useful results in such situations. For random vibration analysis, the power spectral density curve, or PSD, is used as the input for the analysis to determine the structural response. While input PSD curves are usually given based on engineering specifications or criteria that need to be satisfied, ensuring good quality PSD input is critical in obtaining reliable random vibration analysis results. In this video, we will guide you to understand input PSD and check the fidelity of input PSD curves. Ready? Let's get started. Looking at the raw random excitation data, we can see that it is extracted from time history data and contains many frequencies with the amplitude constantly changing. One feature of random excitation is that at a given frequency, the amplitude of the excitation changes, but for many processes, its average value tends to remain relatively constant. This aspect can be utilized to generate a power spectrum density to characterize random excitation as a statistical process. Instead of evaluating the random excitation in the time history domain, PSD represents the excitation in the frequency domain. The PSD curve generated from a random excitation looks much less complex compared to the original data. So how do we understand such a PSD curve? Looking at the graph, the horizontal axis is frequency with unit of hertz. The vertical axis is the average squared amplitude per hertz, which is amplitude unit squared over hertz. The use of mean square value is a suitable indicator for the strength of the signal, as the mean value would be closer to zero and have a sign, whereas the mean square value is always positive and can be used for different frequencies. Note that the excitation can be acceleration, velocity, or displacement, therefore the unit of the vertical axis can be different depending on what the PSD represents. Now let's move forward to learn how to use input PSD curves in ANSYS mechanical simulation. In random vibration analysis, we have the option to excite the base of the structure by acceleration, g-acceleration, velocity, or displacement. We simply need to input the input PSD data as a tabular data. Once the data has been input, the PSD curve is plotted in the graph window. The quality of the input PSD is automatically judged by the software. Generally speaking, for a good PSD input, the PSD values between consecutive points should not change by more than order of magnitude. If the curve is marked as green, the PSD values are considered reliable and accurate. If it's yellow, it is a warning indicator. Results produced may not be very reliable and accurate. If the curve is red, means the results produced are not considered trustworthy. It is recommended that you modify your input PSD loads prior to the solution process. In ANSYS Mechanical, we can improve the input PSD automatically. Now, let's use a simple simulation example to show you how to track and improve the fidelity of the input PSD curves. Here, we are looking at a model analysis of a simple beam-shaped structure. One end of the beam is fixed and 40 modes are found for the structure. 
We will perform a random vibration analysis for this beam structure. PSDG acceleration data is given as input PSD for this problem as shown here. Note that frequencies of the calculated modes should exceed the input PSD frequency range for random vibration analysis. Here the maximum frequency found is 1540 Hz and the maximum frequency for the input PSD is 1000 Hz, so we have sufficient modes generated. Going back to the workbench schematic, let's drag a random vibration analysis from toolbox on the top of a model analysis, making sure that engineering data, geometry, model and solution cells of the model analysis are shared with a random vibration analysis. Double click on the setup cell to open random vibration analysis and we can see the analysis appears in the outline tree. Right mouse click on random vibration, insert, we can see the options to add PSD acceleration, PSD velocity, PSD G acceleration and PSD displacement. For this problem we are given PSD G acceleration information. For the boundary condition we select fixed support applied in the model analysis and direction of the excitation is in the y direction. Now we move to the tabular data on the bottom right corner and input the given PSDG data. We can copy the given data table and paste here. The PSD curve is instantly plotted and we notice that most part of the PSD curve shows a yellow color, indicating possible loss of reliability and accuracy. This is mainly because the current PSD values between consecutive points change by two orders of magnitude. Before revising the input PSD, let's first solve the analysis as it is, so that later we can compare the results. Once the problem is solved, let's insert directional deformation in Y direction. On the contour plot, we can see that the one sigma results for a maximum deformation in y direction is 74.59 mm, located at the free end of the beam. This means that 68.3% of the time, the maximum deformation in y direction will be at or below 74.59 mm. Now let's go back to the input PSD to improve the curve. To do this, we just need to go to the details of the PSDG acceleration, click on the little triangle on the side of a tabular data, then click on improve fit. Intermediate data points are automatically added to the tabular data and we can see that the entire PSD curve is shown in green now. This indicates a high quality input PSD. Now solve the random vibration analysis again. We can see that one sigma value of maximum Y deformation is 77.355 mm. Comparing the values obtained with problematic input PSD, which is 74.59 mm, there is 3.7% difference in results. Note that while this simple example showed a slight reduction in accuracy, the difference in results between a good input PSD curve and problematic one can be more, depending on the model and input PSD. This completes the walkthrough example. Let's summarize. Input PSD curves are used to characterize random excitation in a statistical manner. It interprets the random excitation by transforming it to average square amplitude versus frequency plot. In ANSYS Mechanical, not any input PSD is considered acceptable for use in random vibration analysis. We should be aware of the indicator of low quality input PSD as it will lead to inaccurate results. One key reason of low quality input PSD is when the PSD values between adjacent points change by more than order of magnitude. ANSYS Mechanical provides an automated feature to add intermediate points to improve the input PSD representation. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.